Welcome to Sports Econ 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Vern Glenn, F.P. Santangelo Jr. joining us again, and Russell Jackman. At each commercial break, uh, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. And in honor of Mr. Jackman, uh, I finally had to come up with trivia theme that is worldwide wrestling. Thank God. Wow. (laughs) I've had enough. I've had enough. Holy smokes. I know. I kept kept teasing. I kept kept teasing Russ with, uh, you know, um, baseball questions from like the 1800s. And uh, he didn't like that so much. You know, he figured (laughs) anything anything before 1960 was kind of tough for him. Uh, Christmas has come early to the Jackman house. Wrestling questions. That's right. right. You know what? These are not that easy. I figured uh, Mr. Jackman knows everything about wrestling. So I was going to try to throw in some hard ones here. All right. Oh, George Atkinson. <laughs> I'm putting you. I'm going to put you on the spot Stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Well, when we come back, uh, there's a few topics we want to cover. One about Barry Bonds it's, it could be his last chance uh, to make the Hall of Fame, and we'll talk about the pros and cons to that. Uh, the A's, a possible waterfront park. Uh, the Atlanta Braves, not uh, changing their name, and uh, Aaron Rodgers wants to receive some of his pay in Bitcoin. I, I don't understand that. Okay. Uh, And then in Zurich, Mexico will uh, have to play in an empty stadium for its next two games due to anti-gay chants by the fans. It's kind of an interesting thing. And then uh, Von Miller to the Rams. We'll see if we can capture all of these uh, in the next few segments. But if we don't, we might have to um, go uh, further on. And uh, do the Astros have the psychological advantage or is uh, two games too much to ask? All right. This uh, segment of Sports Econ 101 is sponsored by Pacific Private Money, still providing mortgage investments that are currently yielding anywhere from 6 to 8% secured by real estate. Doesn't get any more conservative than they are. Check them out at PacificPrivateMoney.com. Stay with us. Sports Econ 101. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, along with F.P. Santangelo Jr., Vern Glenn, and Russell Jackman. Uh, and Hey, F.P., it's great to have you back again. It's great to be on. Thanks for having me, Edward. Absolutely, man. You, you are, you're awesome with doing uh, research on, uh, on various topics. And uh, so first of all, let's, let's cover, um, you know what, because this, this, uh, this show is being recorded uh, just before the World Series is about to end. So uh, let's. Yeah, as we, as we speak, now. game six will be uh, on the day of this recording. But by the time it airs, it'll be all, it'll all be over. Uh, that's it. So. Because this is game six coming up here, uh, after what they did in game five, do you think the uh, Astros have a psychological edge or is two games too much? And what I mean by that is uh, the 86 Yankee, uh, 86 uh, Mets, you know, after the uh, Bill Buckner situation in game six, you know, they just came roaring back in game seven. Uh, Kansas City in 85 uh, came back to to win 11 to nothing after the uh, bad call at first base. But this is two games, and so I'm wondering, guys, uh, what do you what do you think? Is is two games a little bit too much to ask of the Astros? I don't think so, Edward. Just because um, in baseball it's day to day, it's a day to day sport. We've already seen the Braves win a game away too in Houston. I think more so than anything, the home field advantage is going to be a big deal for the Houston Astros, and we've seen that throughout these playoffs, especially after COVID. I mean, these crowds are getting rowdy. It's really hard for pitchers to locate and throw strikes, and then. Those hitters are hitting those mistakes. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, I think the Braves still have the upper hand because you have to beat the Braves twice. And the Astros, you know, they, they have to do that, and it's going to be really hard. But I'll tell you what, if it goes to game seven, anything could happen. Okay. You guys agree? We saw, it. We saw Atlanta lose a 3-1 lead against the Dodgers in the series last year. So, you know, it's not impossible for a team to lose three in a row or two in a row, uh, especially with the uh, pedigree that, that Houston has. But uh, poor Dusty Baker must be just tossing and turning every night in his sleep, just you know, wondering if this is going to be the year that he wins a World Series championship. Because I don't think he's going to get another shot at it if he doesn't win yeah. this year. I mean, he's still probably yeah. Still I, like feel for, I feel for Dust. I, I feel for Dusty. I, I, I go back to 2002. I was there. Yeah. Angel Stadium, 5-3 lead. Russ Ortiz leads with a 5 nothing lead. 
And then we we all we all saw what happened, and then the Giants, boy, they were they were done. In fact, I think the Giants jumped out to a lead the next game, but but yeah. in the end, that rally monkey and the Angels, and that was that was that, that was it. It was just I've, I've I've never seen such a large collection of grown men cry yeah. like I did in in that Giants clubhouse. Yeah, yeah, I'm still I, not. I texted uh, uh, Bobby Evans today because uh, the Mets are going through a challenging time with their uh, GM. And, and so I was asking him if he was uh, potentially going to uh, get that, you know, was he looking for that job? And he said, yeah, he's, he's hoping he's going to get the call. But right now he's in Houston to support Dusty. So I thought that was kind of Sure. Cool. Oh, that's really cool. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, plus, plus a guy like Evans, you know, you got you to be where it happens because you, you, you also have to network and kind of yeah. get your name around. You got to you got to shake hands and glad hand and back back slap and all that kind of stuff, hoping that you get a call for an interview for that for that open job. Yeah, uh, FP was your was your dad on that two thousand two team? He was not. So he was on the nineteen ninety nine Giants. Ah, ninety nine. Okay, gotcha. All right, and then uh, sticking with the uh, uh, baseball here. So the Atlanta Braves, uh, they're not apparently not going to change their their name. And uh, interesting, doing a little dig digging, the Eastern Band of Cherokee Tribe received 30000 from the team and uh, partnered with them uh, regarding their casino. So, you know, the Wa now Washington Redskins, I mean, that that is derogatory. Uh, Braves, nah, not so much. But, you know, with the tomahawk chop and all that, which I hate, I hate that thing, you know. Um, it's yeah, and, and, it's, and it's a big debate on on – who who got the who got the tomahawk chalk from who was Florida State or the Atlanta Braves? And in the case of Florida State, they have the blessing of the Seminole tribe to continue to use that nickname, the Seminoles. And you know, the Seminoles, that, I mean, that's that's a specific tribe, like the right. I mean, you could you yep. you could you could call them the Atlanta Cherokee or Atlanta Navajo, right? So that's not uh, that, that's not really a, a kind of an, any derogatory situation. You know, but the chop, you know, that that might be right because you know, the, just assuming they're all warriors, uh, you know, all their their the violence, you know, all the violence and all that. So uh, I don't see a whole lot amazing. of chopping going on at Chicago Blackhawks games. That's true. That that's is very point. true. Yeah, I got some information about the chop. So the chop was adopted in 1991, all the way back then, and it was a uh, in the. As soon as the uh, the Tomahawk Chop actually was taking place, prominent Native American groups started to protest it, especially in Atlanta. Ah. And even uh, as soon as 2019, uh, in the NLDS Cardinals relief pitcher, Ryan Helsley, mem member of the Cherokee Nation, thought the Chop was insulting and quoted saying, in this kind of caveman type way, who aren't intellectuals. So people have come out and spoken out against the Chop. Yeah. Not so much about the Braves. I mean, of course, the Braves came from Boston way back in the late 1800s. Then they went to the Milwaukee Braves and they became yep. the Atlanta Braves. So it's been this weird transition. It's in this gray area. And I think it's a great topic to discuss. Yeah. Well, the you know, the name Braves, I mean, that's kind of uh, almost like a superhero name as we as a non uh, Native American would would look at it, you know, Um you know, or chiefs. I mean, that's that's kind of an elevated, you know, just like the kings, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody seems to be upset about that. But that all these other things, like you know, the uh, the, the the tomahawk chop and that sort of thing, yeah, seems definitely a little bit on the uh, derogatory side. But uh, but you know, that's one of the original one about. of the original logos of the Atlanta Braves was yeah was a a a, a tribal oh. chief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, and Sacramento Kings fans have more things to worry about than, than their <laughs> logo true. upsets yeah. anybody. Yeah, yeah, you know, just to, and again, not to, not to be derogatory, just just as a matter of uh, history, my uh, my wife's ancestors actually do have recorded history of, of of scalpings. So I mean, that that's not just stuff of the movies. I mean, that actually that that actually did happen. You know, be, be it for whatever reason, you know, right or wrong, I'm just saying that 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 is an actual thing. Um, let's see here. Now, Aaron Rodgers, uh, he wants to receive some of his pay in Bitcoin. I don't get it because he's going to have to pay taxes on it anyway. What, what's the deal? He can always get his money and then buy Bitcoin anyway. Anyone well, understand? this being Sports Econ 101, Edward, I would think you would be the spearhead on yeah. the subject of Bitcoin. In fact, <laughs> Tom Brady gave Bitcoin to a fan yeah. as, as one of the gifts in order to be able to get 
his game ball back on his 600th NFL pass. Yeah. Now NFL that, touchdown pass. And, and, and that's cool. I mean, I understand that. Uh, but he had already owned it. Um, I assume he already owned it and just gave it to him. And it's worth, you know, $60,000. But to say, oh, well, I, I want to have some of my pay in Bitcoin, it's irrelevant because the IRS is still going to tax you on the value of it at the time. So I, I'm not sure what the big deal about uh, saying you want to get paid in Bitcoin versus getting paid in, in cash or a car or, or anything else. It's one thing if you want to defer so that you don't have to pay the tax now. And, and there's all kinds of deferment packages that employers uh, can set up. But uh, just the idea of just saying, I want to get paid in Bitcoin. And apparently he's he wants to give like a Bitcoin away or a million dollars worth away. Something like that. I didn't read the whole thing. But wow. it was like, yeah, that's a... Uh, how do we get to be Tom Tom Brady? How do we get to be Aaron Rodgers' best friend? You know, I remember hearing this one guy who was uh, getting divorced, and his ex-wife uh, was going to get. This is back in the uh, uh, early two thousands, and his ex-wife was going to get uh, a uh, alimony check of thirty thousand a month. I said, "Gee, for thirty thousand a month, I'll be his ex-wife." You know, good lord, <laughs> thirty that guy. Can you 30, imagine thirty grand a month? I, I wow. know it's, it's uh, for not That's doing for nice. doing nothing. All right, now it's here's what's funny because uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Russ uh, Jackman somehow he got clicked off, uh, and so he's going to even miss this question here. Wow, um, you, what we lost him? We lost oh, him. And yeah. <laughs> and I came oh, up with these oh, questions oh, oh, just the break for of a wrestling question. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll, well see. let's see if we can wrestle with this one then. This is going to be tough. Okay, here's our first trivia question. Triple H became the first heavy, first world heavyweight champion on an episode of Raw in September 2002. Who did he defeat? Ah, Mr. Russ Jackman, you're back with us just in time. Oh, he's back. Russ, okay. we need you. All right. So, yes. sorry okay. there, guys. Okay, we got to hurry up with this question. Triple H became the first world heavyweight champion on an episode of Raw in September of 2002. Who did he defeat for the title? All right, stay with us. Sports Econ 101. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with F.P. Santangelo Jr., Vern Glenn, and Russell Jackman. F.P., we're going to have to uh, we're gonna have to just call you F.P. It, it's too many words. You can just okay. call me F.P.J. F.P.J. I like here. that. Okay. I'll oh, F.P.J. To... That's pretty good. I like yeah, that. I like that. Oh, I'll try to remember that. Okay. So, Mr. Russell Jackman, this question is specifically for you. Triple H became the first world heavyweight champion uh, on an episode of Raw in September of 2002, who did he defeat for the title? Uh, 19 years ago. That is impressive. Um, I, I believe it was The Rock, wasn't it? No, it was. Oh. It was nobody. He held. It, he held it for. <laughs> oh, come on. Hold on. Hold That's... on. Oh, oh, come hold on. Gave him the oh, come on. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. So he held the title for two months before losing it to Shawn Michaels uh, at Survivor oh, Series so in 2002. Like okay, so I had, to, I had to throw one trick question in there for you. All right. Okay. I, I, <laughs> 19 years ago, I guess it slipped my my memory. Yeah, so. but I have to say that you were, you were in the Michael. then, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I was a fan back then. Yeah, absolutely. I but I don't remember him just winding up with the title. I thought he took it from from the rock, but you it know, did. they probably did some At kind some of point angle. They probably to, did. Okay. Yes. Well, you know what you, you, you know what that it's it, it's one big story arc throughout the season. So Yeah. Uh, that's true. Okay. Hey guys, um real quickly, uh last night uh, Monday night football, we found out that uh, Von Miller got traded to the Rams. And I think it was a very smart move for the Rams because I'm thinking, you know, if you're going to double team uh, Aaron Donald, I mean, Von Miller, there aren't too many other people who can block him. What do you think? Well, eight-time pro bowler, uh, n n notorious pass rusher. It just tells me that the L.A. Rams are all in. Yeah. They go out, they get, they get Matthew Stafford, they upgrade everywhere. They've got, they, they, they got all these weapons, and then – they bring in Von Miller. So uh, it, 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 it'll be interesting, at least around the Bay Area, because two weeks from Monday night, Von Miller returns to Levi Stadium, where Miller was the MVP of Super Bowl 50 mm -hmm. at that same site when the Denver Broncos won the 
won it all. And rarely, so it, rarely do you see a Super Bowl team, a team that's been in the Super Bowl, retool their team as much as the Rams have done since, uh, you know, they, they went in the, in the Super Bowl, uh, was it three years ago? Yeah. Two years ago? Yeah. Well, there is, when, you, when you're in the business of winning football games and, and, and you, you've got money where you can give up a second and third round future pick, then, hey, you have more power to you. I mean, they're, right now, they're, I mean, they're, 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 they're neck and neck with Arizona. They're both seven and one. The Rams are just rolling. And this just tells me that uh, there's just no excuses for this time. It, it is Super Bowl or bust for the L.A. Rams. Boy, they're making that trade. Uh, how how happy is Jared Goff that he got traded over to Detroit right now? How happy still is look, he right Still now? looking for a win. He's I don't know how, I don't know how happy he is. Ah, uh, he's got a lot of money. He's fine. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but after all the money, then you go, okay, I've got all this money, and now I, I want to win. Well, I mean, we have to talk about the Rams draft capital and how it's non-existent now. I mean, they don't have a first-round pick until 2024, I'm reading here, and they only have eight picks next draft in 2022. So does Sean McVay believe in draft picks? Absolutely not. And Maybe we're seeing a new paradigm shift here in the NFL, especially if the Rams – and really put one together here and go on a, a serious run. Good, good. Yeah, that's a pretty good point. That's a pretty good point. Raises an interesting question. How important is the NFL draft to some of these teams? Mm -hmm. If you, you can just go Jared and just upgrade, Goff, just pick up free agents. Yeah. How, how happy is Jared Goff that he got traded over to uh, Detroit right now? No, but I don't think the Rams would have done as well if they would have kept them. I mean, Stafford. I know. Been, been and and he run. may go without seeing a win this year. Yeah. Yeah. Jared may go from the the, uh, the Super Bowl a couple of years ago to a winless football team, and they don't look like they're getting any better anytime soon. So, and, and my, I, you know, Stafford Stafford's always been a decent quarterback, but maybe it's just Detroit. They just don't have the uh, front line to uh, you know for blocking. I hear the weather's a little bit nicer too in LA. <laughs> so that might have something. <laughs> yeah, but the Lions play indoors. Indoors, yeah, yeah exactly. Don't. Yeah. yeah. It's the rest of the week that kills him. Yep. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, staying with the baseball, we're going back to baseball here. Two, two things. So the A's, uh, possible waterfront park, you know, for years they've been talking about that. Right? I think the, the stadium opened in 67, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's uh, 54 years ago. Um, what, what do you think? Is it, uh, you think that this uh, park is going to happen? So at, as an indicator of Bob Melvin leaving essentially San Diego, I think you're going to see a tremendous fire sell this offseason, unfortunately, from the Oakland Athletics, primarily with Matt Chapman, Olsen, Sean Manaya, all those guys. I feel like they're going to be gone. And I think the play you're going to see from the Oakland A's ownership is really pushed towards Vegas just because it seems like a lot less of a headache. And actually, as far as yesterday – Las Vegas residents were receiving surveys via email asking questions about, would you like a team here? Would you go watch it if it was in the AL West? Would you mm -hmm. want an outdoor park, indoor park? So there's all these different things going on. It looks like they're really trying to push towards Vegas because you know what? A lot of sports teams are frankly just sick of dealing with Oakland politics and Oakland politics political officials it's just getting ridiculous at this point and yep. you know it's sad to see the Raiders leave I mean the Warriors went across the bay and now it looks like the A's are going to be put in a tough position but man it'd be really tough to, to lose a historical franchise like the Oakland A's in the Bay yeah. Area well, I mean well they've already they've already lost the all-time <laughs> winningest manager in Oakland A's history mm -hmm. so have he, he, even Melvin who had a year left on his contract must have seen something yeah. on the wall where he's like boy I better I, I, I better look out you know, for myself, because I'm not sure where the A's are going. Mm -hmm. So uh, Melvin lands in San Diego. He's got the, with with plenty of money and plenty of talent that he has to kind of try and retool. Does Vegas have an indoor sta uh, stadium? No. So they have the yeah. Las Vegas Aviators over there, the the AAA team. Okay. And they they have an outdoor stadium. So okay. even. You can't do that in the summertime, though, in Vegas. Oh, it's miserable. Nobody goes to those yeah. games, from what I've heard. So, yeah, I mean, you, you have flies. to – I mean, can you play only night games? The, you know, it's kind of – put sort of a weird thing on the schedule, especially if you have to travel the next day. Yeah, I'm thinking about Sunday day games on the weekends where everybody usually travels at night, especially East Coast teams. You just make it a mess. But I think you'd have to go the, the indoor stadium route just for player safety. 
Yeah, because Arizona, um, they have an indoor stadium, though. Yes. Yeah, I was just saying because that, that's not quite as hot, but but it it sure is in the summertime. Um, could they take uh, the current stadium that the that the Raiders are in and and cover? That'd be too much, probably. It'd be way too much, and I don't It'd think be the Raiders are going to share. And we're yeah. we're done with multi-use stadiums. We're yeah. done as a, as a society with uh, having to share a baseball stadium and a football stadium. I mean, if Vegas is going to move the A's then or San Antonio or whatever wants the A's, they're going to build them their own park. It's what the a new baseball team deserves. You don't just shove them into, you know, a, a compromise park. Any baseball stadium, that any baseball team that moves, yeah. New park. So I'll them. leave you with this because I know we got to move on. I'll Sorry. leave you with this before because I know we need to move on. Sorry. In the survey, it says the stadium would be located on the Las Vegas Strip. So how about that? You just uh, wow. You go to a couple casinos and then you head to a baseball game. Maybe a couple of sodas in you. Where's their room? And then the traffic. I don't see how Oakland can compete with that. The, the, I mean the traffic. Yeah, but the traffic though. I mean just you know trying to go a mile on the Strip. Yeah, I mean, it takes you an hour, at least an hour. Um, but I mean, they don't. But they don't care. They 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 know they know it's a, it's a new attraction. They'll pack in the crowd. They'll somehow figure a way to, to to make it work. And again, well, yeah, you you go to a baseball game. Hey, it, it, it it's two to one after six innings. But you 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 yeah. you you feel like oh geez, we want to see something else. You then go to a show. Just walk you know, right across the street. You know, that, definitely, I could see that. But I mean, for the stadium, I mean, that's a lot of real estate. So it's mm -hmm. going to have to be off the strip somehow, or you know, toward one, maybe toward Luxor or something, one of those places. You know, it must be pretty loose when it says near the strip or on the strip. How has yeah, attendance been for the Raiders games? How has attendance been for the Raiders? It's been it's been pretty good. It's been yeah. phenomenal. And and again, the weather. Has, you know, we're uh, well now we're getting into the good weather for uh, for Vegas. So. And again, Vegas, I mean, playing baseball is a little different than playing football, you know, with you don't have to worry about the rain and that sort of thing. Um, but no, the weather, weather in uh, Vegas, I think, is good for, for football, uh, you know, all the winter sports. And then, and then hockey. But that's played indoors, too. You know? <laughs> or otherwise, that ice melts really, really fast. Yeah, right, guys. yeah, yeah, the Golden Knights. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, okay, so now we're going to go to our second trivia question on uh, worldwide wrestling. Well, actually, wrestling. This is, uh, yeah, actually, it is worldwide wrestling. Okay. You, are you listening up, Russ? I am. Okay. Who was the first WWE champion? Now, there's an easy question for you, right? All right. Uh, email edward at sportsecom101.com if you are a worldwide wrestling uh, fan. See if you know the uh, answer to this question. Who was the first WWE champion? All right, when we come back, I want to talk about uh, Barry Bonds and the Hall of Fame. WWE champion. Yeah, we're worldwide wrestling, right? That's what we're talking about. All right. Stay oh, no, there have they, been different incarnations of the Fed. Uh, no, but this goes back in time, so it's, it's the uh, – I think it's the original. Okay. All right. Stay with us. All right. right. Very good. If you're listening to Sports Econ 101. Don't touch that dial. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to Sport Econ 101. I'm F. I'm FP. <laughs> I saw it. Yeah. Wow. Well, now. Uh, 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 I'm and I'm Brown. Brown. There is yeah. FPJ. I like that. And I, I'm, I'm Russell Jackman. Jackman. <laughs> and Russell Jackman. All right. Uh, you can't tell. Does, does that mean I can do the fifth quarter? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Come on in. Uh, you can't play. You can't tell the players without a scorecard. Okay. Who was the first WWE champion? Buddy Rogers. Yes. Damn, look at, I do that. look at him. Look at him. The Jackson nature boy. The original lap. nature boy. Yeah, very good. Thank and you. Then, okay, it's funny because I thought you were going to say who he uh, lost it in less than a month later to. Who, who did he lose uh, to? Who did he lose to? Uh, was it Bruno San Martino? Yes, in 19... Okay, so yes, Bruno, Buddy Rogers in 1963 and then lost it less than a month later to Bruno San Martino. Wow, that's pretty darn good. I'm impressed. Boy, and then I held it for nine years. Impressive. Years. Held oh, for nine years. That's pretty, that's then, pretty he, then he held it for nine straight years. I don't... Wow, well, okay. All right, so now uh, yeah, Barry... just Bart. died a few years ago. Let's talk about Barry for a minute. Uh, Who I regularly think? see at the grocery store. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he looks great. Near my hood. 
Oh, yeah. He does. Yeah. He looks great. He's still biking a lot, isn't he? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's funny. He has the exact same birthday as my old business partner. Same day, same year. Uh, Was that late July? Yeah, July 24th. Yeah. 1964. Uh, Barry Bonds, is this his last chance for the Hall of Fame? And uh, interestingly enough, when you look at the uh, qualifications, it says, voting shall be based upon, et cetera, et cetera, integrity, character, sportsmanship. So one of the things I look at is uh, what about guys like Ty Cobb and Cap Anson and, and all these guys who I don't think they had quite the uh, integrity and character and sportsmanship uh, as, uh, you know, as Barry. And, you know, it, Barry, I think he probably would have made the Hall of Fame anyway, even if he didn't do the steroids, he still would have hit a lot of home runs, you know, still would have been Barry. What do you, what do you guys think? Or is he so, going to wait for the Veterans Committee? Go ahead. Well, Barry told me, this is late 90s, when – when he saw Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire doing what they were doing, and he knew that that he was 10 times the ball player those guys were, yep. and they were getting away with it, that's when Barry jumped into it too. And then the rest is history. Yeah. But I, you know, he, if, if, if this is his last chance to be, you're talking about being voted by the writers, not the Veterans Committee, you're talking about the writers, correct? Yeah. yeah. If this is his last chance, then he would have no chance because he's not going to yeah, get voted in again. It. No, no, no. I mean, he didn't he, make he's... any friends with any of the writers. The writers hated him, and he made it very clear that he was not going to be a friend of, of any of the writers. And well, this but, is, you know, the well, the only the, 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 roof for Barry. the only on. one that he was close to was was Barry Bloom, who was a longtime yeah. baseball right. writer. But if you listen to Barry, he said he needed to have an edge. He needed he needed to play with an edge and 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 being rough around the edges that that was his thing. He didn't share any tips with anybody. He didn't share any batting, you know, inside stuff with anybody. He just he just kept everything to himself yeah. and 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 try to gain every kind of advantage. They had to Photoshop his picture. They had to Photoshop his picture. Yeah, into one of those the years he picture. did. Because yep. he wouldn't tell us for the rest of the team. Oh, is that right? You know, That's I wonder if that, that to his... me. Do you think he learned yes. all that from his dad? You know, about keeping everything close to the best. Well, this is something I, I want to speak on, guys. So, having a dad that played Major League Baseball, the first thing I was taught was not to talk to the media. It's true. When I was in high school, don't talk to the media. Don't talk to this. They're evil. This, that. And it's funny because my dad ended up becoming the media. Became then get off the show. Yeah, then really funny. And now here. I work we, in media. So this is media, it's, yeah. it's full circle. But, but, but see, that's different, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. It was just media is different than being in the media. It that's was just a safety thing and making sure we're keeping everything close to the vest and things okay. like that. So if I was taught that, and you know, my dad is uh, a career 254 hitter. He's not Barry Bonds. Yeah, Think perfect. about what Bobby Bonds was telling him. Thinking about what Probably Willie Mays, Mays was yeah. telling him and what they both had to go through through maybe some racial equality during the times and what writers were writing about them or maybe just taking cheap shots just because of the color of their skin. So I can only just imagine what Barry Bonds was being taught his entire life. And then he finally starts to see these kinds of things happen to him and he becomes very, very jaded and closed off. So that's one of the things. But uh, I just want to bring this discussion to the table. If Barry Bonds... Does he get into the Hall of Fame? I will not recognize the Hall of Fame, and I hope many don't, just because it is not a Hall of Fame without the best player of all time. If you look at that era, lots of people did steroids, and there's even steroid users in the Hall of Fame now today. So for me, if you do not have Barry Bonds in the Hall of Fame, it is not a Hall of Fame. It has, no, also, that's really, it has no merit. Yeah, we've talked about this before. It's like, I mean, if I took steroids, I still wouldn't be Barry Bonds. No. You know, and um, and the, and the, if you look at all, like, all the intentional walks, and yet he still was able to hit that many home runs, you know, people not, pitchers not pitching to him. I mean, you know, I don't care how many steroids he takes. Yeah, sure, it's going to give you an edge, but it's still not going to give you, you know, the, that, that hand-eye coordination. Well, no. what, what, let me, let me give the counterpoint here, which is that, the steroids that Barry Bonds were using helped him play through injuries that would normally have taken him out of games and allowed him to play a number of games that he wouldn't have been able to play if he hadn't taken those steroids. So Same thing with yes, all it didn't the pitchers, help him necessarily though. hit the baseball. Yeah. Same thing that helped with the pitchers, though. It helped him get back. Yeah. Like, think about all the shutouts that were happening in the 90s because pitchers were on things and they could recover a lot faster after a start. All yeah, these things factor in. It's not just nobody is clamoring. Yeah. 
nobody is clamoring for Roger Clemens to be in the Hall of Fame. You know, nobody is saying if Roger Clemens doesn't get in the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame is of no value. So it's I interesting think it's, that yes, Roger Clemens wasn't willing the greatest. To, uh, yeah, but you see, Bear, Barry is the all-time home run hit leader. Uh, Roger Clemens, as good as he was, is not like the all-time, you know, uh, strikeout leader or wins leader, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, well, we see that that without steroids, the the average high home run per year is around forty. You know, it's it's the the seventy three stuff is. Yeah, but I mean, you had so actually home runs right now are at an all time. Maybe high. you know, uh, uh, Maris's home runs. I think it wouldn't have been so controversial. But the fact that he's you know seventy three. There's no way anyone's going to ever hit 73 with the way pitching is now and the fact that just guys don't have the same power they used to. Well, home runs are up across the board. There's actually been several records broken along Major League Baseball with the most home runs hit. I mean, it just happened this year with the Giants. They broke the franchise record for most home runs hit in a single season. We're seeing a game change completely. So you might not have a single guy hit 70 home runs, but you're going to have people hit 60, 65, maybe approach 70 very soon. And, and, and we're looking at just health. There was a time when the ball, when they said the ball was juiced. Uh, yeah. But is it just back to normal now? Assume, right? Yeah, well, that's a whole nother different discussion. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, you know, the uh, start moving the fences in a little bit. Instead of instead of three twenty five, make it like two twenty five, and we'll see a lot more home runs being hit. Actually, yeah. they they've said that closing the knot hole gang uh, 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 area underneath the uh, park, where you know people can come in and observe, that was creating a wind tunnel that was knocking a lot of home runs out of the the, the sky and and making uh, the park harder to hit in. Yeah, and they opened that back up during the A series at Oracle Park. So they, they opened it up for the rest of the season, and it actually did affect some home run totals at home, but they still broke the franchise record. I have a follow-up for FBJ. Your, 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 your dad being a teammate of Barry Bonds, uh, mm -hmm. you ever talk about him with you? Oh, yeah. They were really, really tight, really close friends. Um, I was actually close with Barry, too, and developed a really good relationship with him. Um, he said he just seemed like a guy with a hard shell, and then once you actually challenged him, like in a very – like fun and playful way, he respected you. He didn't respect people that ran away and hid. So that kind of makes sense from a media standpoint. Sometimes you're just trying to get a quote. Maybe you have a, a young starry eyed, uh, a media member, you're just trying to get a quote and he doesn't know how to handle, you know, a big guy like Barry Bonds, like, you know, actually button heads with them. But he respects people that, that butt sets with them, believe it or not. And I think that's how him and Barry Bloom became friends too, because Barry, Barry Bloom stood up to him. So it's just things like that that you don't realize that players respect. Like if you if you talk crap about somebody and you go face them, they actually respect that. They really do. You know, and that's the thing is, is I don't know how people can elevate other people. Peoples is just peoples. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. really, you know, I mean, it can be, oh, yeah, I, I recognize you on TV or, you know, I'm really impressed with what you've done X. But we all kind of, you know, what do they say? Put your pants on the same way, you know? <laughs> he's just a guy. He's just a guy. He's just a, he's just a guy. Now, again, I can see that. It, it's like for the people like who are, you know, uber rich or uber famous like that, the thing I feel sorry for him about is it's kind of hard to tell if someone's being your friend because they really like you as a friend yeah. or they're just going, oh, well, you know, like name dropping or that sort of thing. Then that's got to be kind of tough. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it's funny you say that because uh, – most recently, I, I talked to back in 2019, a young Jordan Poole of the Golden State oh, Warriors. Yeah. Huh? And I happened to uh, sit next to him at a Giants baseball game, and he didn't really understand what came with fame yet. And we had a good discussion. And that kid is one of the brightest kids I've talked to in a very long time. So I feel like he's going to have a great future and works incredibly hard. Yeah. And, he, and you're already starting to see some of the fruit of his labors. So it's, it's really cool to see him develop. But that, that's the thing. He's like, dude, a lot of people are starting to call me now, this, that. I'm like, well... Get used to it. You're the number one draft pick or the first round draft pick of the Golden State Warriors that year. So, uh, and also like from a financial standpoint, these guys they really have got to be mentored because they don't they don't get it taught financials. You know, suddenly boom, they they've got a few million dollars, and you know if you're young, that just kind of you know can get you all starry eyed without uh, any kind of planning or oh yeah, knowledge. yeah. He was 20 years old out of the University of Michigan, and guess what? He brought his best friends from his hometown to come live with him in San Francisco and keep him grounded. And that's how things got smart. You're supposed to do it. Very, very smart. I, I, I love these guys who come from 
humble beginnings and yet they they, they still remember where they came from mm-hmm. you know these and i kind of i don't know i th- sort of think of gronkowski for a minute because he just seems like a like just a really good home boy hometown guy you know doesn't seem like yeah he knows he's famous but it doesn't seem like he got to his head and i don't know him personally but I just you kind of get that feeling you know rock party a little bit yeah <laughs> go ahead what very yeah, are you talking about gronkowski yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I've met him and interviewed him a couple of times. Yeah, he's just, uh, hey, he, uh, he, he, he went to Arizona. He's got brothers. You know, you, yeah. you, one of those guys that uh, you know, the group in the house with his brothers just kind of you know, ripped it down. But, uh, but they respected mom and dad. And yeah, they uh, just, just, just fun loving guys. And they, that guy has nothing but fun playing the game. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, 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 I saw him on a Shark Tank episode one time. He came with his brothers. Uh, one of the brothers had. had invented some i can't remember what it was but uh it's like they're five brothers or whatever and they all showed up and and sure enough gronk was there all right mr jackman you're with us um, here's our last trivia question oh, you, this hour, here we go hour went fast all right who we're talking uh wwe wrestling and next week we'll get back to normal things like football and baseball. Oh, and basketball. oh, 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 oh we go back. We, we go more. We go more mainstream. We go more mainstream. Okay, actually, okay. I did okay. this specifically because for about a year, Russ kept bugging me. When are we going to have wrestling questions? Okay. Who? Here's a here's a, a, a nice normal question. Who is the longest reigning WWE Intercontinental Champion of all time? That's our longest tribute. reigning. Oh, okay. Or, all right. WWE con. Yeah, inter, I don't know why they call it Intercontinental Champion. I don't know if that's uh, something. It was an inter. It's an intermediate title. It's it's like a, like a light heavyweight championship. For, oh, really? you know. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. So, who's the longest reigning WWE Intercontinental Champion of all time? Stay with us. Sports Econ One Hundred One will be right back with some closing comments. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn, FPJ, and Russ. I keep thinking of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches when I say that. I don't know why. Okay, here's our... Here's our PBJ third, for FBJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's our uh, third trivia question. Who is the longest reigning WWE Intercontinental Champion of all time? Russ. Um, unless he's been eclipsed, I believe it's the Honky Tonk Man. Very good. That is cool. Holy and smokes. Here's, wow. here's the additional trivia, which is that my debut as a professional wrestling manager was on a card at APW with the Honky Tonk Man. So there I've actually go. worked a show with him. Robert Wayne Ferris is his name. Okay. And, and, and did you and, let him throw uh, you to the mat? I I was a manager, so I was. I know, but sometimes I was, <laughs> I, was de- I was debuting, so I was way down on the card. He was part of the main event, and he won the championship for all pro wrestling. Took the belt with him and never returned. So the <laughs> owner of the federation had to go out and buy a brand new title belt. That's great. Because, well, well, someday Russ will have to see you wrestle a uh, Paul Bearer. Okay. Oh, I'm not wrestling. I am not. Re- well, I, I, you'd have to have a seance then. So thank uh, you. Yeah, that's much. right. Exactly. Paul Bearer died about 10 years ago. Okay. You guys ready for so. our thoughts of the day? Once my dog ate all the Scrabble tiles for days, he kept leaving little messages around the house. <laughs> uh-huh. I like that one. And uh, I went to the website for Oreos uh, cook today. Uh, I hit accept all cookies and I got nothing. I can't believe it. These Oreos. Boy, you guys, what sense of humor, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we, need, we needed a laugh track. That's what I know. We well, usually I come up with some good ones that makes Vern laugh. Russ usually kind of just chuckles a little bit. All right. Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We'll be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and asking more sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Good night, America. So long.